please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Commando movie thoughts. Gotta love how Jenny literally is very much John's daughter. Not only do you see him training her in some defensive martial art, is that almost pluralized? Anyway, in the montage of them otherwise doing the lovey-dovey stuff, she actually manages to escape from the room she was locked in with a door handle, you know, breaking through these planks that they set up so she couldn't escape through that door out to the... That's quite impressive. She only actually lets her guard down and is captured by Bennett when she hears John yelling. On the subject of that, was anyone else reminded of when, when John is running around, yelling her name, and suddenly you know, he's like, Jenny, kicking down her, Jenny, and suddenly there's a enemy soldier, blows him away, Jenny, was anybody else reminded of Team America, you know, Gary, ah, dude, Mohammed Jihad, <laughs> Gary, yeah, that, I don't know why they thought an Australian would particularly be intimidating. Is he supposed? Wow, I almost did the Australian thing there. I'm going up on the end of the sentence. I don't know. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's to to have a a match of dueling accents. Maybe it's because American audiences need the bad guy to not be American, I don't, I don't quite know, it's, it's amusing. I don't personally find that Australians are necessarily particularly intimidating, unless they get drunk, which they do often. Why is he wearing chainmail? That's what I really want to know, because I don't know, maybe he's just like a big renaissance festival freak or, or something and he, and he never t takes it off. And like the others are too scared to tell him to take it off and you know, maybe take a bath every once in a while because he might slit their throats. I, I don't know, I guess he does have a mustache, so that does automatically make him somewhat intimidating, or at least a bad guy. Man, Hidaya's accent. Isn't he actually, like, Spanish or some kind of... He's got the complexion and the last name, at least. Isn't he some kind of... He just... And there, there were a few times where they had him actually speak Spanish and a couple of times he even... I don't know, maybe it's like a dialect from some region that I don't know of, but it it sounds wrong to me on my two years of Spanish in school. But yeah, he... That, that is an interesting overdone accent there.
I like how if, with this whole stealth thing, I mean, he goes to the trouble of putting on camouflage, black camouflage. If if that's excuse me, if that's what he's going to be using, shouldn't he be attacking at night? Is is that what it's for, or did he just not have any green and he? He didn't want to only do every other stripe. I don't know. You know, he goes to the trouble of taking the stealthy approach, but he is bringing a four, I don't know, barrel rocket launcher and all this. <laughs> and yeah, grenades, these remote detonated charges. Actually, I'm pretty sure that he puts down, like, what's it called, claymore mines, and then he uses a, a remote detonator. Claymores, to my knowledge, are mines, like you, you, you step on one, or you, you, yeah, you trigger one, and that's you know, that's what makes it explode. You don't use a detonator for it. It's not a C4 charge. I don't know, maybe maybe I saw it wrong, but that's that's what it looks like to me. I guess they just wanted something impressive looking and they didn't think that C4 would quite get the job done. And speaking of the rocket launcher, it, it is a lot of fun when Stewardess is When, when she has the the rocket launcher, which we know she has because it was passed to her. Arnold pa passed it to her and then a little bit after he gets captured, we see in the montage that she gets it and he even helpfully lets her know it's a rocket launcher. Both to her and the audience. And then she, she sees him getting captured, getting put in the van, and she drives up next to the, 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 the truck thing, I guess to be parked there so that she wouldn't be too far behind them, I don't know, not important, and they're, they're like, well, oh, I think she's got something for us, and oh uh, yeah, she does, and she gets the thing up, and at first she blows it the wrong way. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then she corrects it and blows the thing and it gets knocked over. And of course Arnie's fine. He's Arnie. That's, that's pretty awesome. And I, I think that it's great that they did have a woman do that. I mean, basically... From the look that John gives Stewardess at the end, I'm thinking it's gonna be like he's gonna marry her and she's gonna be a surrogate mother for Jenny. What did happen to Jenny's mother? Are we ever told? I don't think we are. Anyway, however, there's not really anything indicating other than that that there falling for each other, or that they're, yeah, there's, there's no, like, romantic kind of thing going on. There's, there's no sex scene, yeah, you know, the, like, the one time he starts to undress her, it's so that she can trick, what was it? Ah, crap, Bill, Bill Duke's character. Cook, I think it was. So, basically, that character could easily have been male. But they, yeah, they, they had a female character rescue them, you know, the male action hero. That's, I, I like that. I really do love the... Uh, remember when I said I'd kill you last? That, that whole... 
the the both one-liners and the you know it's it's that fairly rare case when one one-liner is not only a one-liner it's the setup for another one-liner first he says you're fun I like you Sully you're funny that's why I'm going to kill you last and then later you remember when I said I'd kill you last I lied that's that's really great it's he, he doesn't need Sully anymore and then he goes over and pushes over a car wow <laughs> it's almost like that was in like the contract or something or that part was written specifically because they had a bodybuilder in the lead role, you know. I suppose that more or less covers it. I do think they did some really good stuff with the stealth thing when once he gets to the actual island at the end and is slitting throats, sneaking around, planting explosives. There, there is a genuine tactical element to it. He's not just running around gunning people down and it actually does have this element of he's taking on an army by himself. It's somewhat similar to what the Rambo movies sometimes did when they remembered that he is a, a stealthy killer. He's, he's actually doing something that makes sense. I mean, he blows up I guess the barracks, you know, taking out a lot of these soldiers in one fell swoop, you know, before he starts gunning them down, you know, with impeccable aim, meanwhile they can't hit him even once. Actually, just that one time with a grenade, you wonder why they didn't throw more of them or something. Heck, why didn't they throw a grenade into the building that he, that they figured, you know, they, they knew he was in there, they saw him go in and close the door after him. Why didn't they just throw a grenade in it? Weren't there like windows? I'm pretty sure there were windows in that little shed. It would have been easy to just break one of those windows, toss in a grenade, and that would, yeah. Well, what's he going to do then? Especially if they're standing outside the door with guns trained on the door, how's he gonna get out alive and pass them? Well, I guess he could always hope that they forget how to use guns, like in that earlier scene when he pushes a car down, not just a car, like a big SUV, I guess? Or he pushes his SUV down because they, what was it, they, they they broke the engine, they, something, yeah, so he couldn't drive it, so he has to push it down a mountain, insane, and then, you know, he's surrounded by guys with guns, but they're not going to use them, he's just going to smack each other around with the same singular sound effect all, what was it, five, six times. But yes, as I say in the review, I really love how on the island, he, John manages to use every single type of gun. He uses a Desert Eagle, so a pistol, he uses an Uzi, you know, so a submachine gun, he uses an assault rifle, and a machine gun, you know, the M60 picks off one of the guys the, with the tool shed where he's throwing, you know, razor thingies. That seemed like a really prime scene to have gore effects. It's, it's quite surprising that they didn't. Anyway, and 
he uses a shotgun as well, some, also against the, the dictator guy. I suppose that more or less covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.